Good morning. You're on the road with Larry, and today I'm here at Renaissance Guitars with the founder and owner, Rick Turner. How are you today, Rick? Just fine, Larry. How are you doing? Well, why don't you tell us about uh, the Guitar Foundation? Uh, I've got a very interesting project going on, which is uh, building 18 replicas of Buddy Holly's 1943 J45. It's a guitar that I restored in 1990 for the then owner, Gary Busey, who had played Buddy Holly in the Buddy Holly story. Um, Gary bought the guitar at a Sotheby's auction for around a quarter of a million dollars and brought it to me to restore, so put it back into playable condition. The guitar was cracked from the upper bout through the waist and all the way through the lower bout, right through the end block. Uh, the unusual thing about this guitar is that it was covered in leather tooled leather that Buddy had, had done. Here's a, a blueprint, by the way, of, a, of the J45. Um, when I saw the guitar and the shape it was in, I said, well, Gary, i got to take the cover off. He said, no, man, Buddy sewed that on there. You can't take it off. I said, that means i got to do all the repair work through the sound hole. He said, that's right. So I did. I wouldn't want to see it, uh, but uh, I don't think the cover is ever going to come off. I also refretted the guitar, and Gary uh, gave me the original frets that, that came out of the guitar, and I'd kept them for 20 years. In December, a fellow in England got in touch with me and said that he'd heard that I had the original frets, uh, and I said, yes, and he said, would you be willing to sell them? I said, yes, I would. And so this gentleman, Peter Bradley, uh, purchased the frets from me, and then he ordered several guitars. Uh, one each for his two sons and one for himself. And then in January, when I was at the NAMM show in Los Angeles, I got an email from Peter saying, would you be willing to make uh, 18 replicas of the original guitar, complete with leather covers? And I said, that's what I do. I'm a guitar maker. Of course, I'd be happy to. And uh, it turned out that a, a, another fellow that I've known for a number of years, John Thomas, is the world's leading expert on this particular era, 1942 to 1946 uh, Gibson Banner era guitars. I got in touch with John and said, you know, I've got this project to make these guitars, and I'd like, you know, all the info on the, the really authentic ones that, that you can give me. And he started sending me uh, x-rays of the guitars, uh, beautiful pictures, Turns out he was in the middle of finishing up a book uh, on Banner era Gibsons and the remarkable women and few men who made them. It turns out that from 1942 to 46, during World War II, most of the male workforce at the Gibson factory was off fighting World War II. And, uh, and so these guitars were actually mostly built by, by women recruited in for the job or some of whom had been office workers at Gibson. Uh, John managed to track down 12 of them and interview them for his book. And in fact, uh, one of them was the chief inspector, final uh, quality control inspector of these guitars. And we we're going to have her check out the first of the uh, Buddy Holly uh, guitars that, that I finished making. Um, Peter, as, as the project was starting to gain momentum, uh, Peter asked me if it would be possible to get one of the guitars to Graham Nash. Well, I've done work with Graham for close to, I guess, close to 40 years now. I said, sure. And I started realizing that Peter didn't have a real clear marketing plan for the guitars or anything like that. And I thought, what does he want to do with the guitars? And I said, well, and I, I got in touch with him and said, Peter, if you, if you really aren't interested in selling the guitars, why don't we figure out a way to utilize them to raise money for worthy nonprofit causes related to music, music education, uh, bringing music to people who can't get out, uh, organizations like Bread and Roses up in, in Marin County. Um, and Peter thought it was a great idea. I didn't particularly like the idea of giving the guitars to people and then in 20 or 30 years, those guitars are going to wind up in somebody's estate, and they just wind up getting auctioned off again. 
I thought, can't we turn these guitars into some way of helping to raise money for 100, 200 years, you know? Um, anyway, Peter loved the idea, and so we, um, we are in the middle of, of putting together the Buddy Holly Guitar Foundation. And these 18 guitars will be owned by the foundation. They'll be loaned out to prominent and some not so prominent musicians for two year spans of time uh, to be used in concerts, in recordings, in videos, uh, with uh, proceeds kicking back to the foundation, of which the board of directors will then determine who gets the money. And, uh, you know, I've got a couple of ideas about that, but uh, we're also going to be working with Muriel Anderson and her uh, uh, Music for Life Alliance. Uh, she has uh, a very good list of worthy causes to whom to donate money, and so we'll be Muriel will be on our advisory board as well. So, um, and then I think we're going to do four more guitars. So it'll be 22 of them. 18 of the guitars will have wooden engraved labels uh, inside of them, uh, much like the old Gibson labels. With uh, They'll be laser engraved wood, and each one will have a one of Buddy's frets, one of Buddy's original frets, uh, inlaid in it, with a little bit of a story about how this was fret number three out of Buddy Holly's 1943 uh, guitar. So, uh, and then four more guitars will be built with the idea that they go, once again, loaned for specific periods of time to up-and-coming musicians who might need a, an inspirational instrument. And the guitars will all have, uh, they'll all have pickups in them, so they can be used live on stage. The, uh, the first 18 will have leather covers, uh, much like Buddies, inspired by Buddies. And they will be made by Susie Temple, who's a fabulous leather uh, tooling artist in Austin, Texas. And um, the, in this case, the covers will be made with zippers, so they can be taken off. Because <laughs> the, the funny thing about the leather-covered guitar is all the sound comes out of the sound hole. You don't hear anything off the top. This is actually kind of interesting. I think for recording, it'll be kind of neat, because you get that almost like a compressed sound, like you're running it through two Fairchild compressors in series or something like that. Um, so it's going to be uh, quite a project. And uh, uh, Jackson Brown has agreed to be on our board of directors. Graham Nash is on the board of directors. Uh, Cookie Marenko, who's a recording engineer in, in uh, the Bay Area. Uh, David Neely, an old friend of mine who was working with me when I did the restoration job on, on uh, Buddy's guitar, and who also wound up working uh, many years ago as an on-the-road guitar tech for both Waylon Jennings and the Crickets. Uh, John Taplin, who was a uh, professor at uh, USC and uh, for a while road managed Bob Dylan and the band. Uh, he's on the board, and uh, it's going to be quite something. Where's uh, Buddy's uh, guitar today? I don't know. Buddy's guitar, uh, Gary sold it to somebody who put it up for auction last December, December of 2009, uh, with Christie's. And it was withdrawn from the auction. I don't know whether it didn't meet the reserve or whether the, the owner decided not to sell it or what. But they were hoping for a price of somewhere between four hundred and $500,000. And it's, I'm not sure this is the time to be selling guitars for almost half a million dollars, even if it was Buddy Holly's. And for all the fans out there, this is the guitar that appeared in the Buddy Holly story. I, no, I don't believe it did appear really? in the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd have to double check that. Uh, it, I believe the guitar was at the Hard Rock Cafe in Dallas when all of this the movie was being made. Um, and I don't know where it suffered the damage, but it was it was pretty severe. So. Well, great. This is a great story, and we'll continue it on the next take. Thank you very much. We're here with Rick Turner at Renaissance Guitars. You're on the road with Larry. <laughs>